Good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Rebecca Harnett. I am the Senior Director for the National Alliance for Public Safety GIS Foundation. And I want to thank you all for joining us in this session today around emerging trends in emergency management and emergency response. Today, I will be sharing with you a state of the nation on technology related roles and functions within the national incident management system structures used around the country nationwide. Before we dive into the specifics on actual the State of the Union today, I wanted to provide you with some background information regarding the National Incident Management System in case you're new to it. So NIMS provides a consistent and common nationwide approach and vocabulary to enable the whole community to work together and manage all threats and hazards. It applies to all incidents regardless of cause, size, location, or complexity, and it applies to the whole community, whether you're with a local agency, a county agency, state, even applies to the private sector and how they operate during an event and in some cases in many aspects prior to an event in the preparedness phase, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But NIMS is very fundamentally important to how we both prepare and respond and recover from events across the country. It enables effective and comprehensive mutual aid, which is the sharing of emergency resources during an event. So provided here, it gives you a sense of that, that NIMS uh, doctrine or NIMS guidance that's provided out and developed by FEMA, but in partnership with the community as a whole. And that really defines that structure. It sets that consistent and common nationwide approach for the nation. And it's supported by a number of other guidance, um, guidelines, and, and other resources and tools such as NIMS resource management, which we'll talk about here in a little bit more depth, as well as resource typing and the national qualification system, as well as other supplemental resources. So how this all works and how NIMS supports that ethos of mutual aid. So you can see here that there's, there's NIMS and then there's the resource typing doctrine, as well as the national qualification systems. And this helps agencies to consistently type their resources um, for equipment, facilities, teams, personnel, in a way that they can readily share those across the country. And they can form those into mission ready packages and associate a dollar value to those. And so that resource management process itself actually starts at the event, the actual incident objective, identifying what it is that's needed at that incident, and then what, what are those requirements in terms of resources to be able to effectively respond to that event. And from there, an agency who's in the lead would order and request or acquire additional resources through mutual aid or even just through their boundaries of their own agency. And those resources will get mobilized, They'll be tracked and reported, oftentimes in real time, recover and demobilize. And then in some cases, when they're shared across certain you know, jurisdictional boundaries, there may be reimbursement involved. So this slide here provides you just with a holistic view of how NIMS works and what where its foundation at, is at. So it's the foundation for NIMS is lies in national preparedness doctrine. So Presidential Policy Directive 8, national preparedness is our most recent a national level doctrine around in that supports and serves as the foundation for the National Incident Management System. And so NIMS sits on top of that. And then from there, we've got the National Qualification System, as well as NIMS resource typing definitions. And then, you know, kind of supporting that in its implementation are things like mutual aid agreements and compacts, assistance compacts, and then the building of a disaster workforce through training exercises and then uh, credentialing and qualifying personnel. And all that supports this vision for enhanced interoperability among all mutual aid partners. So one of the things that NAPSIG Foundation embarked upon in partnership with FEMA, as well as the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate, is a technology-related roles within NIM structures study. We needed to understand what is the current baseline for how agencies across the country at all levels of government are currently including and supporting different technology functions within their ICS structures today. And we needed to do so forming an empirical basis to understand 
that level of maturity in the nation today so that we can understand what updates might be needed to those NIMS related guidance and guidelines? What supplemental guidance may be needed to further support and advance our, our technology related roles and functions used today throughout emergency operations? So we took this approach and we looked at five different technology related functional areas, information technology, cybersecurity, geospatial technology and analysis, communications, and public information technologies. And we looked at the staffing levels for these technology related roles, as well as the effectiveness of these current structures and agencies across the country. So before I give you a live demonstration of the study results, I wanted to share with you kind of the composition of participating agencies in this study. So there's a total of 221 responding agencies across the country. So it represented a really good cross section across disciplines. Here you can see emergency management, as well as fire, public health, search and rescue, and then also across different types of structures. So emergency operations centers, incident management teams, incident support teams, and other types of structures that commonly apply to MIMS. And then you can also see in these charts here that we had a good participation levels by county government, local government, state government, and then of course our federal partners as well. So this chart here provides you a view on the efficacy of current placement of technology roles. And this is a roll up of a lot of the results across the different uh, charts that you see in this study. So in emergency operations centers, you can see that breakdown of the per participants reporting an effective approach is in place today with regards to that particular technology function in their EOC or in their ICS structures. So you can see there's a range of maturity. If you're looking at IT, it's at about 45%, whereas public information tech is at 63% and cybersecurity is down at 20% which is to be expected given the fact that cybersecurity is a much newer, more emerging technology capability um, and function within NIMS today. Additionally, you can see the breakdown by ICS structures and you'll see a similar composition there as well. And then this slide just provides you a snapshot of the, of the different um, results uh, for IT within EOCs. And now I'm just going to take a moment and I'm going to close this slideshow and I'm going to share with you an actually a live demonstration of the study results today. So this is a link and the link was in that presentation I shared just a moment ago and you'll be able to access this. It's publicly available. We provide you with some background information on the study and then we break it down by emergency operations centers and incident command systems. So you can look at the results for each of these depending on what's most relevant to you. And you can see you'll be able to interact with the map and the different results that I already shared in terms of the participant breakdown. And then you can navigate through EOCs, IT, and then it goes down to the other functions as well, cybersecurity, geospatial technology. And you can deep dive into the results for each of these technology functional areas, understanding of were they included in the EOC structure, are they addressing mission needs? And are they integrated in the overall structure? You can even dive deeper in understanding, is there a dedicated supervisory position for that function? What technical staffing levels do they have for an operational period for that particular function as well? And then just that placement within the EOC structure. And then you can see those numbers of the overall efficacy in that role. And you can scan through and you'll see the variation as you look at function to function across both EOCs and ICS. Here you can obviously see there's a pretty big difference with cybersecurity, but then as you go down, you see with geospatial technology and analysis in EOCs, you'll see a bit more maturity and advancement in these capabilities. And you can also further understand what is the staffing levels how much have they been elevated to be able to have a dedicated supervisory position and considerations such as that. Now I'm going to navigate back to our slideshow and walk you through, I walked you through that live demonstration of those results. Again, here's the URL to be able to access those study results on your own and interact with them. But what my takeaway message here is that considerable progress has been made 
to include and mature technology related roles and functions within operational structures today. We can't diminish that, that's significant. We've made a lot of progress. But we also have a lot of work to do and improvement is still needed in where and how technology related roles and functions are placed within emergency response organizations. Some technology related roles and functions are not yet part of operational structures as we just saw. And agencies would benefit from using this study to self assess, ask yourselves the questions around your own efficacy of technology roles within their organizational structures and begin to identify priority gaps. And as we also shared with our partners at FEMA, working with the community to develop NIMS guidance that can help to advance and mature technology roles and functions within operational structures so that we can further bridge the gap and further mature the integration in use of advanced technology to support emergency management and emergency response nationwide. So one of the next things that we're doing to support this effort is we're launching a second study and we've done so in partnership with FEMA and our partners at DHS S&T around a resource management maturity study. Coming out of this, we realized we need to know more. We need more empirical understanding of how technology is being used to support the resource management process across the nation today. And to what extent is the community implementing NIMS resource management practices? So we encourage you all to participate in this study. You can scan the QR code or access the link down here and it is completely anonymous. It's a one-time questionnaire. It takes about eight minutes to complete. But this data and information that you're gonna be contributing to is so important to how we'll be able to uh, you know, really inform updates both to NIMS as well as investment through grant programs and everything else for the community to support building and advancing and maturing our capabilities. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us and we truly hope you found this presentation uh, beneficial to your agency's efforts and we hope you'll join us uh, in participating and in taking a deeper dive look at these results.